My, my friends here, Andrew and Sean. Is it Andrew? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Andrew and Sean. I told you I'm terrible at names. Mm -hmm. um, the car, this is a suckier orange, uh, brand new car. When did you get it? Uh, I've had it for about a week. Okay, so we just got it. Got it from Perform Performance Delivery Center, uh, which they do a great job. Mm -hmm. I was surprised on my car too, I was telling you this earlier, mm -hmm. they don't jack up the paint. Like a dealership, we have all kinds of swirls. Yeah. So, you know, if we looked at this under a light, um, I didn't see any out in the sun. I mean, the paint looks really, really good. So you can't, other than just some water spots from, mm -hmm. there aren't any. See, normally if I shine the light, you would see. The swirls, yeah. Like if we went out to my wife's car, you'd see swirl crazy. <laughs> she takes it to the, she takes it to the, um, to the car wash. So, you know, if I were diagnosing this and say, well, one, it's a brand new car. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily disqualify us from needing to polish. Just because it's brand new doesn't mean they didn't jack up the paint. You know, mm -hmm. it, either the delivery center or at the VPC or whatever the heck they call it, the mm -hmm. port, uh, or somewhere else. Even at even at the um, like my GT3 had wet sanding marks all over the rear deck just from from the factory. Yeah. So uh, BMW does a pretty good job of getting the cars out as long as the dealer doesn't touch the paint. You're usually pretty good. So mm -hmm. other than my fingerprints from touching it. You know, it looks looks awesome. Yeah, so so what I'm going to show you here is show you how you would, and we'll we'll just deal with the trunk. I'm not going to mess. We won't mess with this. Um, so we'll just tape this off. Mm -hmm. But we'll we'll sort of work on this panel, and I'll show you how you would finish it or jewel it, they call it, and then we'll 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 um, we'll fin you know, we'll coat it or we'll LSP it, they call it, last step product or last step protectant. So we'll put. Um, uh, uh, the power lock and the and the and the colonite on here, mm -hmm. and then you only have to do that, like I said, once every once every eight months or so. Mm -hmm. So normally, what we would do is one, you'd get your light out or you take it out in the sun, so mm -hmm. we'd you'd go out and wash it. Then you'd say, well, you know, how does it look? The car, your car is clean, but it's not clean enough to polish right now. Mm -hmm. So normally, what we would do is we'd go out, you'd wash the car. What I wash it with is chemical got a citrus wash. I think they stopped making this stuff. Um, but this is citrus wash, which is like a, uh, it's a citrus based, heavier Some, soap, a little okay. strip it. You could use Dawn, um, yeah, this is okay. just fancier, um, probably less, less abrasive. Dawn, I think has a little abrasive in it, so mm -hmm. I don't usually recommend that, but, but you would do, I, what I do is a combination of this with, um, Adam's APC, uh, just all regular, all purpose cleaner. APC. So what we would do is I put it in my foam canning. Mm -hmm. I put you know a couple ounces of this, a couple ounces of, of the Adams APC, fill the rest with water, foam the car, and just let it sit, mm -hmm. let it run off, uh, and then I'd wash the car with this, and that'll strip most of the wax off. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to worry about that because we'll, we'll strip the wax off here. Whatever they, we don't know what's on the car. Yeah. Something's definitely on the car. Mm -hmm. We'll strip that off with the with the clay bar. Mm -hmm. So normally you would do that wash it, strip the stuff off. Mm -hmm. Then you would follow with an iron out. This removes the iron from, yeah, the, from, the, the, from the paint. You probably don't have any on a new car. Um, you know, it just depends on where it sat and where it came from. Um, we could spray some on here, but I doubt there's really gonna be any iron. That's something you would wanna do all the car at the same time. Because yeah. um, I don't wanna strip off the, 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 the surrounding wax since we're only gonna do the, 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 the deck right here. Okay. So this, you just spray on, let it, you, know, you just don't want it to dry. I don't know what it would do, but no. I wouldn't. Just, <laughs> if you smelled this stuff, you would say, just, just don't do it. It's probably not a good thing. Um, so you just, what I do is just kind of wipe it in, mm -hmm. you know, with, the, with like, a, with like a, with my normal rag or my normal, you know, wash mitt, mm -hmm. and then just rinse it off. So you, you strip the wax, you get rid of the iron that's in the paint, mm -hmm. and then the next step would be to... Um, Does that still do anything to stuff. the uh, rubber? No. Uh, it doesn't hurt the rubber. Put it on the windows. Just do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do... I'm gonna waterless wash this real quickly, mm -hmm. uh, just to get whatever dirt's off, and, and then we'll then we'll sort of pick up the, the process from there. Okay. And where's my waterless wash? <laughs> you got so much stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's right here. Let me make sure we can see. Now you got this all in bulk, and then you put it to the bottle. 
Um, a lot of it I buy it in a gallon, gallon form, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so those are your gallon jugs over there? It's just less expensive to buy in, in gallon form. So I don't do waterless wash a lot because it, it just you know incre incre increases the chance of scratching the car. Like I, this is when I would do a wireless wash. You've washed it, it's clean. Yeah. You went out, drove it. Now it's not super clean, but it's way cleaner than if it rained or was all dirty or something. Mm -hmm. So then you just want to make sure you use a, a good amount of it. This is Adam's waterless wash. Okay. The other thing is it's going to make a mess on the, we're going to make a mess on the rest of the car anyway, but so you just put a decent amount on. And then I fold the towel into quarters and just kind of, you know, so I'm not like, you don't want to grind it in, mm -hmm. especially if there's any sand or dirt on the car and then just kind of use your quarters and get it clean. This won't scratch the paint. Okay. As long as you're using a pretty heavy ply towel. Notice I'm not, you know, not grinding yeah, in. It's real I'm just like kind of, you know, just kind of, just letting the towel do the work. And again, even this, you can still introduce some scratches and stuff in the paint. So um, I like to try to avoid this if I can, unless again the car was as dirty as yours is, which is not very, you know. Yeah. So now we got the dirt off the car. We'll clean the window afterwards. We're gonna have to. I guess I don't need three of these. I got so many empty drawers that I use these. For <laughs> uh, let's do this now. So the next step is to decontaminate it. And this is an auto scrub, so you can use this, it's one, or if you're familiar with clay bar, have you ever yeah, used yeah, clay that's bar? What I do. Another thing is a clay bar, so these do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this is just like a rubber, and it's much simpler, much cleaner, doesn't stick to your hands, and if you drop this on the ground, you gotta throw it away, this, yeah. you just go rinse it off. Mm -hmm. um, so auto scrub does, it's called nano skin auto scrub, it does 95% of the work. Or the qual the quality is as good as um, uh, clay, but it's just less than a hassle. yeah. So this thing costs like twenty bucks, but I've had this for like three years. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you got this, and you also have a wash mint, which you can do it when you're washing. I don't like this; it doesn't mm -hmm. really work very well. I don't think. So while you're washing the car, you're just you spray your uh, clay lube on there and just you just go with that. I just don't think this one works as well. And then the third option which is what we're gonna do right now, just so, just so I can show you, is the, this is for my orbital, for my polisher, so we put it on. Obviously make sure there's nothing on there so that you don't wanna grind it in the paint. Mm -hmm. So we got the paint clean. Let's pretend like we theoretically stripped it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is gonna strip off whatever wax is on there too. Okay. So um, um, the you know, clay bar will pull the wax off as well. Uh, we're going to wipe it down with, with alcohol as well to make sure we get, get this stuff stripped off. But yeah, normally this would be bare metal right now with no, no, no protectant on it. So we'll use polishers. So these are Rupes polishers. Um, yeah, that's what I need. <laughs> these you don't have, I mean, you don't, I didn't start with Rupes. This is like 450 bucks, you know, 470 okay. bucks for this. And we've got all. You really only need one of them. I just have them because I'm a maniac. I like, <laughs> I like complete sets. And I, you know, I've, I've built this collection over, I was telling you guys, over 15 years. So it's not like I just bought this in one, one sitting. Um, but uh, this is the bigger one, the 21. So this is a 21 millimeter orbit. These are better than like the the, the old Rio's garage and the Porter cables because the throw is longer. That's what that's what you got, right? A Porter Porter cable. Yeah, so Porter cable. So so the, the beauty of this is that it's going to work in a random orbit. So I can just sit it here and mm -hmm. I'm going to do much. I'm not going to mess the paint up. Um, so you don't have to worry about messing the paint up with this. The only thing you have to worry about is this, you know, hitting the edge on here or something like that. Okay. So like like this, I would clay bar. That's mm -hmm. what, or I would use the sponge. You know, so so because I don't want to be yeah, trying to get up in here yeah. with this. This pad isn't very thick. There's a good chance I could burn right through the clear coat on the on the on the carbon fiber. So, um, you know, you you know, people be tempted to sort of run that up on here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had a thicker pad, I would probably still polish this with this. 
but again, you just have to be careful that okay. you're not you're not you're not blowing through the paint here. But with a random orbital, you can't mess. You, you I don't want to say you can't. Mm -hmm. It's really 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 hard to mess anything up. You're not removing enough paint to really matter. Yeah. Versus a rotary, a rotary is just a direct drive where you can blow right through your paint <laughs> if you're not careful because it gets hot. Yeah. So because this is moving in all different directions in a random orbit, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it sitting and, and, and screwing up. So you can take it. All right, so this is a uh, this is a, just a detail spray. This is um, nano skin, auto scrub, this stuff. So you buy this, you fill it up to here, and you fill the rest of it with water, and then, you know, you got the bottle filled with this. So that's kind of like the lube that you use on with a clean Same thing, you can use any clay lube, McGuire's, you know, anything you would normally use. Like, I just don't use my Adams because this is a lot more expensive than this stuff is. Okay. And so, you know, yeah. you'd think it wouldn't matter as much money I've already spent on all this crap, but everybody has their limits, I guess. You can't use too much. The only thing you do is use too little. So this is the fine version, and then there's the with your car. You, as long as you take care of it, you should never need this. But this is the regular version. Oh, so, so you can feel the difference. Here. See, this is a heftier. This is a softer. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, I got you. So this is gummier and grabbier, and where, where the the fine is not as not as aggressive. Much for your clean car. <laughs> so with this, I would usually use. It says to use it on speed one. I use it on like three. I actually, want to get the job done. So what you don't want to do is this. Okay. I'm doing it. You want to take the time. Let the pad do it. Do the work. Same thing with your polishing. You do this, it's not hurting anything, it's not doing anything. Or very little. I'm going to ask you if you know when you're playing, you can see that, that you can tell that you need to flip it. Uh huh. Well, it doesn't matter. matter. No? And like this, there's not, there's very little on it anyway. You don't really need to apply any pressure on the auto scrub. We will on the polish, but not on this. But see what could happen if I ran this up to here. I can, I, can, I can burn it or I can hit the edge. You just need to be careful. That's the only thing you can really mess up with a random orbital is that. I think I like this better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So, the only reason I'm doing a little bit extra is, I mean, I would just spray, you spray the whole freaking car down yeah. and be done in maybe 30 minutes, yeah. where a clay might take you two hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Seems like it'll save you a bunch I mean, time. the other thing you can do, like, I, I have this for the mirrors or for, since we're here, we might as well dial this in too, but. Uh, even that's quicker than a clay bar. Yep. <laughs> So, I mean, it does the same same job, just with a little less effort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one of these detail companies are about to make a couple hundred bucks off of me. One of these detail companies are about to make a couple hundred bucks off of me. What kind of cloth is that? Same thing? This is uh, just an Adams, um, I love these. The Adams Great White, they call it. I, I know these are my drying towels, towels that I use for drying. Even like to dry the car when it's Yeah. Anymore. So after I'm done you know, washing, these are the towels I use for drying. Mm 
So no like absorber, or is that that's like an absorber? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have all these big, I bought all these big fluffy, plush, great absorbing towels, and they never mm -hmm. freaking work right. Mm -hmm. These work great. Waffle Weave has always been my my favorite to use. So I use these on. Um, I also use them on the windows too. Yeah, like a little 16 by 24 version for the windows. Gotcha. So, you know, you know, special window towels that you're supposed to buy. Well, the problem is I throw it on the window and it's like, and they don't freaking move. Where these just do a good job that no streaks, not grabby. And if you take care of them, I mean, these Grios garage towels, this towel here is 15 years old. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, and, and it still feels like new, you know. You just have to wash it with Micro Restore. Yeah. This stuff. I was just about to ask you, what do you want? Yeah, Micro Restore, the normal detergent, and that's it. And then I actually dry them. They come out better when you dry them than yeah. if you don't. All right, so that's done. Let's just wipe this down with a little um, alcohol as well. You don't want to use straight alcohol because okay. it can. Huh? Is it good? Yeah. I, think like I mean, the car good. already feels good, but there's a little, you know, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that feels a lot smoother than this. Okay. So um, this is 20%. I spilled, you know, your normal roughing alcohol IPA. If you have Walgreens, buy some IPA. Okay. And um, put, you know, 20%. So, yay and then put the rest of water just okay. you can use distilled water regular water if you use the 91 percent i've used it straight on the paint before but it mm -hmm. could soften and the wrong clear coat could really mess it up so you just want to be careful normally i wouldn't do this step because we'd already stripped the, the wax i just want to be sure that we got all the, all the stuff off so if you got if you have like a small area you want to do something to is that then i'd do it this way yeah okay. this is probably unnecessary because we probably removed most of the wax mm -hmm. and if we didn't the um, the polish is going to take the rest of it off, mm -hmm. and then these are microfiber tech towels. Get these from um, Detailer's Domain. I like edge towels better than edgeless. I don't know why. I just do it. Some people like edgeless better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just depends on preference, I guess. Yeah, I've got these blue ones from uh, Dito's Domain with yep. the uh, black border. Are those yep. pretty good? Yep, those are the exact same thing as these. These are just a little bit, little bit heavier pile. Those are the ones that I've used for years. The, I think they're called, I think he calls them Uber Ultimate or something like that. Yeah, or Uber. I got a bunch of those. Yep, I had 200 of them. I just got rid of them. Oh, yeah? Okay. Just because I wanted, I wanted something new. <laughs> and I was trying an experiment and... Alright, so now we got paint that's ready to polish. Now you need tape. Yeah, I could swear it almost looks a little less orange peeling than the rest of the garden too. Yeah, well, it's not. <laughs> Golly, man. Uh, <laughs> just like go to Home Depot and buy it. <laughs> no, this stuff, this stuff is hard. I mean, it's expensive. This is this the greens. This is just regular. I, I bought a bunch of this because when we took a trip up to the painters tape up to the. Um, Mountains. I thought I was going to need a bunch. I used one roll. That was oh. it. And I bought you know two cases of it, <laughs> thinking I was going to need a bunch of it. But this is called two thirty three plus. This is what body shops use mm -hmm. for you know for um, taping of it. Yeah, for painting. Uh, it's a lot more expensive, but it it's there's at least less residue, and it just does a better job at holding up to the polisher when you when you hit it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this off. And I'm gonna take this off just so we don't overlap. You don't normally have to do that if you're doing the whole car, but you'd want to take your lights, you'd want to tape your trim, you'd want to tape this, mm -hmm. you'd want to tape this, you'd want to tape, um, you don't want to tape the windows, you'd want to tape your shadow line trim, you definitely want to tape your headlights. If you, you know, you see headlights that haze over, well, if you hit it with a polisher, you'll start to remove the UV coat and then you'll have to wet sand them and start over. You don't want to re ever remove the UV coat off the white if you can help it. Just to just keep yourself from, um, you, know, you can fix headlights, but it never looks as good as it did when it was new. Yeah, that's true. So I'm just going to create a barrier here just so that we're not overlapping. 
and then we're not so I'm not stripping off your the wax off of your other panels because I'm not doing your whole car. <laughs> we'll be here for the next uh, twenty hours. Twenty hours or so. <laughs> Yeah, don't ever make the mistake of offering to do an entire car. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm smarter than that. My time is worth it. I mean, for my wife to let me do this, the only reason she let me do this is I went to the I went to the Gator game yesterday with her. You think that would be like awesome, but I'm just not I'm not a huge fan of going to a place where there's you know, people all around me. <laughs> I'd rather watch it on TV. And I'm not a Gator fan, so. And you never have to worry about taking Did they win? Yeah. Gator won? Nice. Yeah. 5 and 0 now. You know? And again, this doesn't have to be like perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, as crazy as I am about having everything perfect, it's just so that it's gonna, you're going to pull it right off. So yeah. you just want to make sure that you're covering up. And if you overlap a little bit and you miss a spot, I mean, mm -hmm. who cares? I mean, if I don't get exactly up to the edge, you can't see that anyway. And yeah. the polish is not going to get in there regardless. So, I mean, you want to take your time and do things right, but there's, again, there's a level of crazy that even I have my limits on. <laughs> and you can do this to the carbon fiber or the same thing, to the roof. So okay. treat the roof just like the rest of the paint. Okay. It's just, you know, it's clear coat over top of a... You know, carbon so this I probably want to do this separate because you know when I'm, yep. I'm polishing, I don't want to. Yeah, in this, in, I mean, if it's not swirled out, mm -hmm. um, see, see what we just did technically marred the paint. You know, mm -hmm. when we when we when we did that, when you use a clay bar or yeah. you use the auto scrub, we're you know we're we're marring the paint a little bit. It's not something we can really see, mm -hmm. but now we want to bring the shine back out of it. We don't have any scratches or we don't have any any swirls or anything like that. But all we want to do is just jewel the paint. It's going to be a very subtle. If we we probably won't even be able to see it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're out in the sun and you got the whole car jeweled, it just you know it just shines a little bit better. Okay. Um, so uh, we when we decontaminated the paint, we stripped the wax. We then you know decontaminate by using the clay bar or the auto scrub. We scratched the paint. So now we just need to jewel it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a really really fine polish just to just to dial it because it already looks really good. Okay. Um, and so. What you could do is, like, let's say the car, let's say you got the car and there was some scratches or swirls and, yeah. the, you know, the car was messed up. Then you would use something like, that's an FG400, which is a compounding polish. It's a, okay. it's a heavier polish with a microfiber cutting pad. So you would use this pad on your thing and then you'd, you'd, you'd sort of work, you'd work, work out the paint and then you'd get your light out and see if you got the scratches out. Gotcha. I never had to do that with mine. You'll hopefully never have to do that with yours. Oh, yeah. So this will remove some paint. It'll remove a few microns of paint, mm -hmm. um, which is okay. Um, you probably, this car probably has, I always get, I always forget mils and microns, which is which, but um, let's, let's say this would remove maybe 5% of the clear mm -hmm. coat of the paint. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't want to do this 40 times, uh, but you could do it many, many times and you'd still have some clear coat before you blew through the clear coat. Okay. Um, so you don't have to be too careful or too afraid of using something like this. If you get a scratch, if you can feel it with your fingernail, you're probably screwed. You're gonna have to remove a lot of paint or you're probably just better off leaving it. But if it's like a little scratch or a little swirl from mm -hmm. a, you drug a towel with a little piece yeah. of sand or something, then you grab the FG400 and the, and the microfiber pad and you grind it out. And then you follow with a finishing polish. So you follow with a 4000 or, in this case, a 4500. So I like Menzerna polishes. You can use Meguiar's, you can use Sonax. Yeah. Sonax and Menzerna, I think, are the two best polishes. Okay, yeah, I think I got some of that stuff with a kit. Yep, yep, probably. Mm -hmm. If you have Power Lock, then you probably have this. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use the big polisher. Those on the good lock on this. Yeah, that's a, a good and a bad thing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a finishing pad. So um, this is where just experience comes into play. Uh, because your paint looks so good, um, it's dialed in. Um, I'm not gonna do what you you could do a multi-step, a compound, and then a finishing polish with different pads, mm -hmm. or you could do a single step. 
like I could use a, a slightly more aggressive finishing polish uh -huh. and a slightly more aggressive pad. Okay. Like let's say I had a few little scratches, I've had the car for a year and a half, mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, you know, a few little hits, little scratches here and there, and I wanted to do just a single step. This stuff finishes really well, and I just use a little bit more aggressive pad. Mm -hmm. With your car, because the paint's already so dialed in, I'm gonna use a finishing polish with a finishing pad. Okay. So this is a, just a finish. We're just doing a final like finishing final. polish. Yeah, yeah, not a one step, but it, it technically is one step, but we're gonna do a final finishing. So basically when I attempt to do the car, I wanna use a, if I've got that stuff. Which I'm yeah, there should be no reason why you need to use anything else. If you have 4,000, you'll be fine. Okay. But see, this is a finishing pad okay. versus this would be more of a polishing pad. Oh, okay, wow. So this is stiffer. So what you could do is I could throw this stiffer pad on, uh -huh. grab the 4000, and I'm gonna show you how to finish down with it, but I just remove pressure as I go down, and this, this could be a good one step. Your car doesn't need a one step because it's already pretty dialed in. All we're doing is just sort of jeweling it up. Okay, and these are from the... This is Rupes, yeah. I would, if you don't have any of this, I'd do Grios. Okay. The new Grios garage, it's called the Boss System. That's oh. all, they have the pads, they have everything. Okay. And just use men's urn polish. Okay. So, the more polish you put on, the, you know, the harder, the more it can, you, you can't really put too much on, mm -hmm. but if you put too much, then it flings around all over the place and yeah. makes a mess. So, initially you'll need to butter it, your finger, not really an exact science, you just kind of put it on there and move it around. And then I'm going to do like two by two sections. And this is the, the one of the reasons I chose the trunk is the easiest one to do. Yeah. You know, like the, the other areas of the car are a little more yeah. difficult. But um, um, I love doing the big panels because you get to stand up, you get to look at it, you get to sit here, and you know, it's a lot easier. So because I'm finishing, like if I was doing a, a compound, I might even choose a little smaller area to work. But what I want to do is a cross hatch pass. So I'm going to go this way, and then I'm going to come back this way. And I'm going to go back this way. You know, you want to watch my operation on how, how I'm sort of slow with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to apply a little pressure, okay. and then as I make successive passes, I'm going to release pressure a little bit. Right. So I'm not hammering, you know, if you push too hard, you know, with the pad, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, I'm giving a little, a little something to it. Okay. And then, then as I come off, I'm going to release, release a little pressure, release a little pressure, and then as I finish, I'm almost going to kind of lift it up a little bit. So you'll spread it on four. Spread it around. Finishing it down. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to correct anything. 
if I'm actually correcting the pain, I'm gonna just keep trying until it gotcha. goes away. Okay. You know, and at some point you might have tried too much. Mm -hmm. um, you, again, you don't wanna sit there and polish for hours and hours and hours because mm -hmm. you could blow through the clear coat at some point. So that's basically it. So if you do that to your paint, see now it's okay to push because there's nothing on the paint. It's clean. clean and shiny and nice this is much better so here you go all you put a little polish on so you just add a little bit in between each time put it on four you got butter in it probably. yeah mm -hmm. You no, know, not now. You only butter in the beginning. Just oh, put it on four, and then when you pull the trigger, mm -hmm. you pull it, and then you push the thumb side here. It'll stay on. Okay. So pull it. So now we've got corrected, finished paint that's ready to be last step, well, almost ready. So now we need to get, so normally what I would do after this step is you're going to go out and wash the car again. Um, we're not going to do that because we only did this little section. Yeah. So you wash the car just to get the, but you need to, that's the mo most important part. You need to be careful that you don't um, mess up the paint, just correct it. Right? Okay. 
Yeah, so so we want to make sure that we you know take extra care when you're washing it to not beat the crap out of it. Okay. And then you would bring it in and you'd use either either that twenty percent IPA. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. What do you want? <laughs> you broke it? No. You're towing? Oh, that's cool. I'll take it outside. This kid is like legit of not hitting car. Like I've been training him since he was oh, born. Yeah? So don't be nervous. <laughs> so this is Carpro Eraser, which just smells better and is less grabby than the um than the, than the IPA. Oh, okay. But you can use isopropyl alcohol as well. So this that would be the final wipe down. Well, there's nothing on the paint other than the, the, the residue from the from the polish, and you don't want that mm -hmm. oil causing a, a, a issue with the bonding of the okay. of the wax. So this just kind of gets the remaining. So I would go out, I'd wash the car, mm -hmm. then I'd come in and just do this as a final wipe down before I put my mm -hmm. uh, my um, power lock on the car. And your wash, you're talking about the same general wash that you did before, where the soak it. Where, well, the actual normal would like to take it out and hose it down and do a whole... But do you soak it again? No, no, you don't need to. Just use regular, I use regular Adam's shampoo rather than having to use the... Um, the so I would foam the car like I normally would, but I don't have to let sit or, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. just, I just want to wash off, and mainly because of all this crap. You yeah. know, you get all this stuff all over, you just want to wash oh, it okay. off. Oh, okay, easy way to get it off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, imagine you're... You're 12 hours in to that, yeah. and that over the whole car, yeah. and then you can go out and wash it again, and it's just, it. you know, it's a whole <laughs> whole process. That's why it's better when you got two cars right. rather than one. All right, so now we're ready to do our last step. Our last step is going to be power lock, and then top the coal right. And the power locks. This is a, this is a sealant. So you can see it's a fake, it's like a synthetic oil-based or chemical-based sealant. So this, you already know how to put this on, you just wipe it on. I know we didn't polish this, but since we messed with it, let's just top it with something. And this is all done by hand? Yep. You can do it by machine, but I just do it by hand. It's just as easy to do it this way as it is by hand. See, this is like, um... Because you don't lay it on really, really thick. Yeah. I think I might be using too much. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a lot. Shoot, I mean, that little bit of application could probably yeah, cover the whole car. Huh? Oh. <laughs> and then you just let it haze over. Yeah, this stuff, yeah. wipe off half of it. Let them see, because that stuff I have on you. Yeah, you can wipe it off. It's yeah. like, it's like magic. On like you know old school wax. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, where you wipe and you still see something and you know wipe some more and you're already. <laughs> right. So that's Mazerna. Mazerna power. power. Okay. So that's a sealant. Oh, I love it so much. I'm afraid they're gonna discontinue something in the bottom of the whole bridge. See, when I asked you about whether you had a coating on the car, whatever they're using is very synthetic. You know, it has a very silicone look to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Where my car looks a lot, not as shiny as yours, mm -hmm. but, you know, the depth, I think, is a little bit better. Um, now, granted, we're also talking white versus bright orange, you know, yeah. reddish orange. But, um, but I prefer the depth than mm -hmm. I do the shine and the beading. Yeah, and then of course. You know, so, so a lot of the new stuff, like if you use um, C quartz or you use um, um, OptiCode or uh, the, the big one now is Modesta, mm -hmm. those are permanent coatings, well, semi-permanent coatings, and they, you know, they, they bond with the clear coat of the paint and they last a lot longer. The problem is it just looks really fake. In my in my in my did, opinion, did they custom make those cut inserts? No, I have to cut all these out my own. My own. So I, you know, you use an exacto knife and cut them. <laughs> so all those are cut. I was gonna say, I yeah. mean, that's amazing. 
It takes about 45 minutes each one, so I, Ugh. yeah, you know, just hanging out here while I put football on, yeah, just, yeah. just watching, watching TV and doing it. Give her another second. So you rub that off and then you put on the next coat. Correct. So theoretically, if you wanted to do it exactly correct, mm -hmm. correctly, you should put it on, let it cure for two or three hours, okay. then do colonite. Then wipe the, the, the same thing with the colonite haze. Some are a wipe on, wipe off. Uh, I think the power lock, I think it tells you to let it haze and then wipe it off. Um, but so in, in like five minutes, you wipe it off. But the, 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 the same thing with the colonite, you let it haze and you wipe it off. Others, you just wipe it on and you wipe it right off like this stuff. If you, this stuff is actually way better than, um, this is Sonic's polymer net shield. It's actually a lot better than power lock. Um, but it, again, I don't like power lock by itself as much. Mm -hmm. um, I just like the extra depth of the colon it gives you. Um, so, but if you were running, wanting to run just the sealant, mm -hmm. the, the, the polymer net shield does well. The only problem with polymer net shield for us is pollen, uh, pollen neutralizes it. So in the, in the, in the uh, springtime, it zaps the, and you have to do it again. All right, so you're good. Look, try to see how easy it comes up. <laughs> yeah, it's so awesome. You, oh, wow. you see that? Yeah, unlike most. And that's the oil base or the whatever the chemical yeah. base of it. It's just easier to get off. You have to clean your window too. You say the other one's pretty easy too. The, uh, the one yeah. on the top of it. Yep. Not as easy as this, but yeah. still pretty easy. Okay. <clears throat> so this is what you were doing as the final coat. Though. Yeah, I've got some of this. Too. So you weren't. Yeah, when I did the E46, I did that. Oh. See, the car looks. I think your whole car is dialed in, man. If you just finished it, I mean, you technically could just strip it and put the power lock right on it if you really. Want. <laughs> It's like a freaking dream. Oh, yeah. That's what it's all about. Decontaminated, corrected, polished paint, coated, finished, versus. Yeah, that feels beautiful. It's just so much different. <laughs> even though, you're, beautiful even beautiful. though your car looks great, super dialed in, and looks clean, this is on a whole nother level. Yeah. You know? Can't wait for the entire car to feel it. Yeah. <laughs> Of what I do is then I end up walking out in the garage and you know rubbing my hand. <laughs> mine, let's see, I, I did mine about four months ago, and I drove, but it's still pretty. Oh yeah, well, yeah, it's still a nice feel to it. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's after about four months. Is that this is once every eight months? Yeah, because you're daily driving this, right? I mean, maybe every oh, six. No, maybe a week ago. Oh well, then yeah, maybe even once a year. You're gonna want to do it more than that. Yeah. So that's all I need is just have a little bit of wax. You don't need to freaking load this uh, thing up. Yeah, I think I Even that's probably a little much. It doesn't matter if you put more on, it's just harder to get it off. You just waste some it takes longer, yeah, it's waste, waste some product and it's harder to dry. The only reason that's down to half is because I don't have it on the freaking floor. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was making a comment on the video about how I've had this for like five years. And <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> So I love this part because it goes on top of the, the power lock, so the car is so smooth and it just... Oh, you can feel it's going And on. what ends up happening is when, when you're doing the whole car, like static electricity builds up. It's weird. It's like you, you, get, you end up zapping yourself because of uh, how, I don't know why it does that, because it's so, so smooth. <clears throat> so you just let this dry a minute. And then, like these things, these little hex grip pads. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have all this crap on the website. If you go to the detailing page, oh, really? and then I have the essentials I was at the top. Ask you the next, next yeah, at the top thing. I have essentials, mm -hmm. and I, all this stuff I'm explaining to you, I have. So you just buy it right through your website? Well, you can if you want, yeah. But it's, it's just Amazon. It takes okay. you to Amazon, and that's okay. usually the cheapest way to buy everything. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. That's what, that and so right. I made links to Amazon, mm -hmm. or Detailer's Domain, or Adam's, or wherever you like, like. You can't get these from Amazon. You have to get this. These are Adam's wash pads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wash 
They're so good. I've, I've tried hundreds of these things. Uh, I don't like, personally, I don't like mitts. I like pads. Okay. And these pads, this is the old 11 inch. Uh -huh. um, the new ones are 10, which are perfect. Um, but it's just, I don't know, Can just the way it? that it works is great. This is okay. six years old, really? something like that. And I just throw them in the washer and dryer. Does just don't wash them with your microfiber. Does it mm -hmm. give you any soil mark problems? No? Zero, none. None. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't have any. I better not have any. Oh, okay. I'll get the light out. Sure. <laughs> After four months, you might get a few scrapes or scratches or something, mm -hmm. but... You're getting um, close to redoing it anyway. I mean, the car's a year old and you know it's dialed in mm -hmm. and i don't obsess over having every you know thing perfect i just want it to look good i don't yeah. want it to be swirled out mm -hmm. you know and it's called the swirl mark these it doesn't matter minor swirl mm -hmm. if you touch them yeah if you and you have to wash them they they, they swirl out oh the and gloss black trim you can't see it on the on the on the, the shadow trim everywhere else it's only here because it's such a big piece uh, i mean you and there's just not much you can do. I mean, unless you really, really get crazy and just never dry them, hmm. um, they're they're nearly impossible to keep because you always get fingerprints on them, you know, from touching them. Yeah, yeah. So, so you'll um, you really don't have a choice but to wash it, mm -hmm. and then when you wash it, then it swirls it. Mm -hmm. It's such thin, such soft. It's not really paint. I, I guess it's clear or something. So, so with this combo right here, you say you do your car about every eight months? Yep. Yep. And you don't put on any, like in between washes, you don't? I use um, uh, like a drying agent, either Grio spray on wax or, um, or, or detail, detail spray. Go watch the washing videos. Okay. And you know, if you want to, you'll be bored out of I your know, mind. I, I watch them. <laughs> but if you watch the washing video, it'll tell you sort of how I do it. And, and again, none of this stuff is like some super secret formula. It's just, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the process that I put together through trying everything right. um, and screwing things up 50 different ways. And not to say this is the only way to do it. You'll find your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the key is no scratches. I wanna do it, I wanna wash my car without putting scratches in it. I wanna wash my car without putting swirls on it. And if you do that, then that's your process. You know, people are always calling me out on YouTube, like, you're not doing that right. I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe in your world, but in my world, it works. Really, detailing is not an exact science. It's something that it either works or it doesn't. And products get, you know, products become very subjective. Like, I have certain products that I like. There's 5,000 things that I've never tried before that are probably great that I just don't know about. Yeah, yeah I like it, yeah. Wow. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, that feels dialed in. Amazing. Feels great. The rest of your car feels good too, but just mm -hmm. like this is clean here. Just feel the difference between mm -hmm. that and that. Yeah. <laughs> and this looks great for normal people. This is fine. Yeah. But why not? When this exists, why not do this? Yeah. And then the metallic pops more when you're out in the sun. Mm -hmm. It just looks, it'll look like a different car. Nice. As good as yours looks. But the beauty is now you don't have to ever polish the crap out of it because it's kept you know, mm -hmm. nicely. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Well, let's clean your window. Hey, did you throw my towels in the dryer or no? No. Okay. Do you want them in the dryer? Yeah.